Very excited to be here. Now, the fans have all been racing on this simulator during, during the course of the morning um, to basically get the opportunity to test out the Formula E track here in Marrakesh. And they've been absolutely okay. loving it. But this time it's a little bit different. Normally we have it. Normally we have it. Normally we have it. Normally we have it. Against our nine Formula E drivers. But this time we have a Moroccan racing driver, a very young Moroccan racing driver in the house who will be joining us, Michael Ben Yahia. Now, hopefully we'll catch up with him later. Actually, I can spot Michael over here. Let's see if we can grab a quick word with him because he had the opportunity to actually drive the Formula E car this week. So technically, he's had experience in the car in the real world as well as in the virtual world. Um, Michael, I know you had the opportunity to actually drive the Formula E car earlier in the week. I mean, tell us what an amazing experience for you as a young racing driver. What was it like? Uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, I had a great time. The car it drove really well, has a lot of power compared to the Formula 4 that I'm used to driving, but I really enjoyed it. So do you think this could be a, the start of a future career for you? Uh, yeah, hopefully. I, I really hope that I have a great future in racing now. Now, lap times. How has it been going on the simulator? Have you got your practice in? Because you know how competitive these Formula E drivers are, uh, and they're going to want to win this. And sometimes, just to warn you, they can kind of gang up on the new driver on the grid. So watch out. Oh, I'm going to make sure to be careful. Uh, Michael's just going to finish the race because uh, I'm not used to driving this simulator yet. So I'm trying to do my best right now. And I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you know, Moroccan, you're a local driver. What does it mean for you to have Formula E in town? Uh, I'm very happy that there's Formula E in town, and I'm very proud to drive the car for the first time in Morocco. And uh, yeah, I was really excited. Excellent. Well, good luck for the race, Michael. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's see if we can have a, a catch up with some of the other drivers who are here. They're very focused. Nelson, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. Uh, I'm glad qualifying is over so I can push even more here now. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you feeling after your qualifying session? Explain to our audience that have maybe just joined what happened. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the first part of qualifying went very well. We qualified our car in the top five. And then in Super Bowl, I kind of uh, pushed a little bit too much the edge and uh, did a little mistake. And uh, yeah, I kind of ruined the lap but I mean it, it happens I mean uh, we I knew I was in the top five regardless so I decided to kind of take a bit of a, a gamble and a risk but still starting from second round the grid is uh, pretty positive now it looks like our racing could be about to start now not all the drivers are here quite yet but we could be about to start before we do though maybe let's have a quick chat with Jose Maria Lopez what do you like on the simulator? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello to all our audience that are listening. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm OK, I think. I, I, I really like. I have one at, at home. I like to play. And I, I really enjoy to, to do the races in the, in the simulator. So let's, let's, uh, let's see what happens. I mean, this is obviously a track that you know extremely well. You were here earlier in the year. You won your World Touring car race. So. You should be acing this, really. Pressure's on. Yeah, yeah, everybody's been saying that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, different areas is different history. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm OK. I feel confident for the race. I think it's very important for to get, to get uh, experience. You know, I, I don't want that after turn one is over like it happened in Hong Kong. So I'm really looking forward to jump in the second car and, and, uh, and do a good race. I think, you know. This series, anything can happen, you know. Um, I'm P13, but I think, you know, if you do a good race, you can do a, a good points. And, you, you know, looking at Degrassi and Hong Kong, he was last and he ended up in P2. So anything is possible. I mean, we're down here in the Visa Esports Arena. What do you make of the opportunity to actually drive on simulators against your peers instead of on track? Well, it's OK. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great fun. I mean, to drive with the, the guys and, you know, we, we really laugh. You know, here you are a little bit more relaxed. So you really enjoy it, and uh, it, it's good. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, good luck. Thanks very much, Pachito. Robin Frains is here. Robin's actually pretty good in the gaming world. Um, Robin, tell us how your morning's going. Are you enjoying Marrakesh? 
Yeah, I do, I do. I'm, uh, it's good weather here, it's better than Holland, so it's always good. <laughs> Have you been to Marrakesh before? Have you tasted the delights of the Moroccan food? Because it is delicious. Um, actually, I was looking for the big uh, market together with Antonio, but we didn't find it, so, um, well, too bad. So you haven't bought any pots or, you know, a, a nice robe or a scarf to take home? Ooh. No, 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 I didn't because, uh, yeah, we were looking for it, but we didn't find it. Well, we'll have to go shopping tomorrow then instead. <laughs> Good luck for the race. So I believe that uh, Jean-Eric Verne has just arrived and also Lucas de Grassi. Hello, Lucas. How are you? Uh, very well. How are you? I'm very good. I think you're running late, so I'm going to... Your car is... Can anyone find Lucas's car? I think this is the perfect one. It's got your name on the back. Right. We'll let Lucas take a seat and get ready for the race. Jean-Eric Verne has also just arrived. We can have a quick word with you. Jeff, how's today gone for you? Um, obviously, it was all starting so well during qualifying, but what happened recently? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a bit of an issue uh, with timing. I don't know, the team thought that they couldn't send me out. And uh, I asked a few times if they were sure. They are absolutely, uh, they, I mean, they seem to be sure about it. So I arrived at the end of the pit lane, and it was red light. and. Uh, the race director coming in the radio telling me uh, that I could not take part of the Super Bowl. So it was uh, quite frustrating. But, uh, you know, I have a good car. Uh, my, my lap in, uh, in qualifying was six tenths faster than what has been done in, uh, in Super Bowl. So I'm really confident I have a quick car. And, uh, you know, I can come back in the race and uh, at least it's going to give some uh, entertainment. Oh, it certainly will. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Now, in a moment, the e-race here at the Visa eSports Arena is about to come and get started underway. Um, massive thank you to all of our fans that have come down to watch. Hope you're going to enjoy the show. Yes, give our, our drivers a cheer of confidence. I think some of them are going to need it. Um, right, I think we are ready to start this e-race. So, Martin, over to you in the commentary. Thank you, Nicky Shields. There's Nelson Piquet Jr. And our guest driver, Mikhail Bahia from Morocco. Of course, Morocco already has a World Touring Car Championship race winner in the form of Mehdi Banani, the first African driver ever to win an international FIA motor race. Well, Nick Heidfeld starts on pole position ahead of Jerome D'Ambrosio and Myra Engel. Then Nelson Piquet lies in fourth place. And there is our guest driver, Mikhail Bahia. And he will be representing, or represented by, the Nick Heidfeld Mahindra car. Lights are on. We are ready to go for the first of six laps. And away we go. Slow start from our guest driver, Jerome D'Ambrosio, jumps to the front. And it's the dangerous first corner that might put paid to our guest hopes up the inside goes Mauro Engel there's a spin on the inside and that was from Lucas de Grassi and I'm afraid that our guest driver has been walled already so a uh, spin as well from the Andretti car multiple shunts cars flying in the air but through it all now that's what you need to do escape the first lap let the full-time drivers knock each other off I feel back up to third. Jerome D'Ambrosio, though, is our driver who leads. And Mikel Benia is in second position. Nelson Piquet Jr. trying to go around the outside of him. And Jerome D'Ambrosio with the lead briefly. Now they're going to have to try and reel him in. Down the end of the long straight, Piquet turns in before he gets on the brakes. And the Mahindra car is in the wall. And that is going to completely change the focus of the race for our guest because there is the race leader Jerome D'Ambrosio and Jerome in the inset now all he's got to do is get himself dialed into this car and of course without the seat of the pants feeling of the racing car that he's just got out of that's not the easiest thing the track goes in the same direction uses all the data from the FIA for this track so it's exactly right However, of course, the racing drivers are at a definite disadvantage. They're used to the seat of the pants. And so quite often the gamers can be right up there. Now, of course, 
looking forward to the e-race in las vegas in january with a million dollar prize fund the biggest race in esports history We've already had qualifying races at long beach and in paris there are two more qualifying race weekends coming up from berlin and from London towards the end of November and into early December. And you can still sign up if you go to the Formula E website, you can get yourself a license. And the drivers who do best, every time you go on, serve on uh, sign on to the server and uh, start taking part in races at whatever level you're at, you earn points based on your performance at the level at which you're at. So whether you're a raw rookie, you'll be up against other rookies, or extremely experienced, you'll be up against other experienced drivers, and Degrassi just carrying too much speed in, claims PK as well. Oh, echoes there of the actual race in Hong Kong last time out when PK got caught out in the lead. They seem to be dialing themselves in now. It's not exactly free extra practice time, but it is a little bit of more focused concentration. And again, Degrassi off, very hard off there at turn 11, at turn 10, beg your pardon. Being dive bombed by uh, Robin Fries when he was facing the wrong way. Jerome D'Ambrosio still leading from Mikkel uh, Benyard. And Jean-Eric Van up to third position from Maro Engel. Met a racer in the paddock, young uh, Scots driver called Graham Carroll, who, like our guest driver here, is also racing uh, single-seaters junior level and he's won races in Paris and Vegas is his big target the winner alone the first prize at the end of it will be two hundred thousand dollars now you'll be able to race against the Formula E pro drivers they might be looking to the check as well because it's not restricted just to the guest drivers however those of you who might want to be racing at home are probably going to spend an awful lot more time on the simulators is the biggest ever prize in esports history and to put professional drivers against uh, amateur drivers in this case is again a major first in esports history so you'll be able to race against the entire grid of Formula E drivers and a whole host of other qualifiers so our six lap race now we are halfway through and our guest what's the gap at the split to Jerome D'Ambrosio Focus. The drivers really are now starting to realize that actually this might be quite important. It's a little bit of fun, yes, and it doesn't distract them from their race day, their real life race day here in Marrakesh. But on the other hand, any time spent on simulators and particularly on this exact game system now, it's the same one that will be used for uh, all the qualifying races and for the e race in Vegas. That is time well spent. The likes of Jose Maria Lopez, who has a reputation for being extremely good, not just on the simulator, but translating simulator into real life. Well, he's avoided trouble like this, where we've got Robin Friens and John Eric Van uh, in a, they're sitting next to each other. What normally happens now is one of the drivers reaches out and punches the other one in the arm just to distract him to. <laughs> They cannot get uninterlocked. Eventually, one of them will have to lift off and allow this um, bromance to end. <laughs> Tell you, Felix de Costa can't believe what he's seeing from teammate Robin Friends at the moment. It's not helping either of them. Now they've come unlocked, but uh, it's getting back up to pace. They are going to be dropping towards the tail of the field. Jerome D'Ambrosio, the lead is coming down, by the way, down to 6.8 seconds at the last split. We're on lap four of six, Maro Engel in third. Didn't see much of him, he's been very quiet. Just to survive the first couple of corners with relatively few incidents. And Mr. Grassi again carrying too much speed into seven. And then through eight and into turn nine, he gets underneath, literally underneath the Virgin car. Now, well, happened to Jerome D'Ambrosio. He's binned it because our Moroccan race driver, Michael. Binahia has taken the lead of the race. So there he is. Now, he drove the Formula E car on the track here, and he is now leading in the E race. So we have never had a fan beat all the pros. We have had several pro drivers lose concentration and uh, bin the car and lose the race, but never to a fan before. So this is E race history, season three, race two. 
this is going to be potentially the biggest upset. But he's a Moroccan, he races single seaters anyway, and he runs out of talent at turn 10 and puts it in the wall and hands back the lead to Jerome D'Ambrosio. This could come down to a final lap shootout. We're on lap five of six. That's exactly what he didn't need. Did he let the tension get to him? Didn't seem to break his focus. He just tried to pinch an inch too much at the end of the straight, or at the beginning of the straight. Jerome D'Ambrosio leads the gap as they start the last lap, 3.1 seconds. So D'Ambrosio now must not commit the cardinal sin of all racing drivers. Criticising Ferrari when he got a contract. But apart from that, the, the, the cardinal sin of all other racing drivers is to lose concentration when you are hot, got one hand on the trophy. D'Ambrosio as his rival. Michael is looking very focused indeed. Can he find somewhere the pace to catch D'Ambrosio? He's going to have to hope that the Belgian makes a little mistake. And looking absolutely cool, calm and collected. Made short work of the chicane there. He's learning fast, as all these drivers do. On the advantage when they get to Vegas is that the gamers will have had an awful lot more time working on setup of the cars. The Vegas track won't be available until the lucky winners and our pro drivers get to the Vegas E-Race in January. It will be, as Nicky said earlier, between the Las Vegas Strip and a whole host, of, whole host of landmarks, but nobody will have had practice on it. The drivers might learn it quicker, but the gamers may well have more setup data that they can draw on to fine-tune the cars. We're into the final couple of corners. It's going to be close. Jerome D'Ambrosio has given away time at the end, but our guest driver runs very wide and into the wall, exiting the final corner. It is victory for Jerome D'Ambrosio and our guest driver will take second, the silver medal position. Second spot on the podium, just ahead of the fast closing Mauro Engel. Fourth place, Nelson Piquet Jr. And in fact, where has Robin Freens got to? Looks as though Piquet has had a little glitch. Here comes Adam Carroll. And he comes across the line to finish. So it was close, mistakes by both race leaders. Jerome D'Ambrosio ends up with a narrow victory there, Nikki. Yes, indeed, Jerome D'Ambrosio, huge, huge congratulations. Although it was pretty close, we thought Michael was gonna have it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, these things are actually, you know, cruising around in these things are not, uh, it's not easy, you know, because you don't get the same, um, same feeling as you get on the, on the real track. So even if you're uh, leading, you, <laughs> it's easy to make a mistake and uh, I did one, he did one and in the end I end up in front, but it's good fun. But you definitely had your game face on, the focus and concentration was serious. Yeah, of course, I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you do something, especially if it's going well, you're going you're gonna to try to do good, but uh, no, yeah, it's good fun. Well, maybe if you've won here, you should be heading to Vegas on the 7th of January. Because on the 7th of January, we are having the Visa E-Race taking place. And there is a $1 million prize money. I mean, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Are you going to be entering? I'm going to have my real game face on then. <laughs> I think I'm going to get practicing too. Now, if you can join us in LA, in Vegas, uh, it will be taking place on the 7th of January. But in the meantime, we need to get ready for the race this afternoon, as for the very first time, our 20 drivers will be hitting the track here in Marrakesh. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you at 4 o'clock for the race.